What's going on guys and welcome to another episode of All Mouth Bassing. Today I'm out at Valco Ponds at Lake Pueblo State Park and I'm gonna try to do another little food chain challenge today. I'll probably start it out the same way I did the last one, get a grasshopper or cricket, put that on a hook, try to get a bluegill or sunny with that, then use that to make cut bait, throw that out on some cat lines. Well, there's bass in here too, but I was trying for catfish last time and ended up on a bass. So this time I'm actually gonna try to get it done and get the catfish. So I'm gonna go, try to go grasshopper, sunfish or bluegill, uh, catfish rather than bass this time. That's the plan. Hopefully it all pans out. I'm going to get out there in a minute and try it out. Last time I was here, like I said, I did the old food chain challenge and I ended up on a surprise bass instead of a catfish. So that was pretty cool, but wasn't what I was going for. So today I think I'm going to try to get the video done the way I intended the first time. I'm actually not sure today though. Last time I was out at pond five. Today I might go to pond four. I'm not exactly certain yet. I'm going to check them both out, see which one I like the looks of better today and cast in which one, whichever one I decide. So without too much more to say about that, I'm going to get after it and try to get on some fish. Here's the little state park sign. It's a little map of Valco Ponds area and the little river behind it. So basically, as you guys could see, ponds one, two, and three here are regular Colorado regulations or regular state park regulations, actually. And then you've got the ponds four and five up here. They're special regs ponds because they're actually used for high school fishing tournaments, as you guys can see. Southern Colorado Junior Bass Club, Parks and Wildlife. So all bass must be returned to the water alive immediately. That's because they use these two ponds for little uh, high school bass tournaments. So they try to manage the ponds really well, let the fish grow nice and big and all that which is pretty awesome. But because of that, ponds four through seven, I actually called last time, I didn't realize the sign said it, but ponds four through seven, catch and release only for bass, bag and possession limits for channel catfish is one. So please guys, for both these reasons, don't be a scumbag, cause there's a reason for these bag limits with the channel cats, there's only so many in there, they were only able to stock so many in such a small pond. So if idiots come here and take their entire stringer of catfish every time they come out these ponds are going to be absolutely worthless so for that reason please don't be scumbags only keep one channel cat if you're going to keep and release all your bass so these high school kids can have a good place to fish because i mean as you guys know if you fish colorado regularly it can be a pretty tough spot and being a kid just getting into the sport i could imagine it wouldn't be as easy as in a place where you can really get on fish so like I said, guys, please just respect the rules here. Try to keep these ponds as nice as they are. All right, guys, I'm actually out at pond five right now. Last video I did out at these ponds, I was actually confused. And in the beginning of this video, I was thinking that I was at pond five last time, but that was actually pond four. And this pond is actually deeper up in the woods. I'm gonna go ahead and try to catch some sunnies and bluegills. I already scoped out the pond. I think there's two little spots I wanna put rods out. There's one right where I'm at right now and then one just down beyond the boat ramp a little ways. So I'm gonna try pond five today and actually try pond five today, not just try pond four thinking it's pond five. And uh, yeah, hopefully we get on some catfish or whatever. I'm gonna do the old food chain challenge like I said I was gonna. Actually, before I catch a bluegill or sunny, I'm gonna have to catch my bait. Let's see if we can find some grasshoppers. Uh, saw one or two jump. Oh, there's one, big one. Oh, he's a smart one though. Had me figured out from the jump. They're definitely thick in here in these weeds, and these weeds aren't freaking thorns like last time. I could actually walk in these and not feel like I'm gonna freaking bleed out. I think it'd be easier to catch a grasshopper. I mean, I'm sure there are people who are better at it than me, but it's not, it's not the easiest task ever to me. I'm trying to just spot one before I walk towards it, but they blend in so well. 
Oh, there was a perfect one, but he got away from me. If I could get one out in the open, I could probably catch it. Is that one? Oh, I think I see one. Oh, and it jumped the second I said that. <laughs> They're freaking frisky today. They're like so fast, I'm not even seeing where they're landing today. At least the other day I was able to kind of track where they were going. They blend in so good with this crap I'm in right now. Like I need to find, need to find some other kind of vegetation that they don't blend with like this. Some kind of action going on over here. Oh. I see one. All right. I might be able to get this one, guys. Got him. Yes. That was a freaking struggle, but I got one. All right, guys. I ripped off just the head of that grasshopper. Try to hold it still. I ripped off just the head of that grasshopper, put it on a 32nd ounce jig head. I've got it on a barrel swivel just because I already had the barrel swivel on my line and I didn't really feel like taking it off. So, I know y'all never really see me use barrel swivels, but today I am. Spots look like they'd have, oh, there's a, oh, that's a baby bass. Not what I'm really after. Oh, what is that? Is that a bass? I think that's a bass. Yeah, that's a bass. I mean, it's kind of cool, but it's not at all what I was after. Oh, he didn't get my—he didn't get the head though, so that's good at least. Man, aggressive little fish. I'll tell you what, kind of cool. A little micro largey. All right, I'm gonna just toss this little dude back in. All right, so. There's a high population of super aggressive little largies in here, apparently. Because there was like five or six chasing when I threw that in there. There's one right there. Oh, and there's a bunch more little bass, which I don't want. Something to the right, but I can't tell if it's a bass or a bluegill. Oh, that's a bass, dang it. Oh, there's something. Yes. Oh, missed it. Something little, something little tried for it. Probably would have been just about the perfect size for a live bait. All right, guys. After like a literal hour and a half of trying to catch a bluegill or sunny just for bait, I finally got one. So we're pretty far into the morning at this point. I was trying to get out here nice and early so I could beat all the heat and everything and then things just didn't exactly go the way I planned but I guess that's the nature of fishing you can't really just go out and plan to have the best day ever and just always have one or I guess I mean I guess that would take the fun out of it I'm trying to be positive about it but that was just a really 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 frustrating last hour and a half so like I, I, I had hoped to be fishing that whole time and actually have legitimate bait out actually after the species I'm after but I mean, as you saw, it just didn't work out that way. So I'm gonna get this piece of cut bait out there and hopefully we could get a bite on it. Throw the old bell on there. Hopefully we could get a bite. I'm fingers crossed. Really, really hoping this goes better than earlier did. I hope I could get on a cat without as much of a struggle as it took to get on a bluegill or sunny. I mean, usually that's not the way it goes. Usually you would think the bluegill and the sunny would be the easy thing to catch, but 
At least today that was not the case. All right, guys, now I've got the tail piece of that sunny I caught. I'm gonna throw this out there and pretty much double my chances of getting a bite with my two rods out. So hopefully I could get on a cat. All right, now we wait. All right, guys, I'm hooked up with something on my tail of my cut bait. Not sure what it is yet, but it's on there. I think it's a cat. It's not a giant, whatever it is, but it's on there. Actually, that might be a bass. It's fighting kind of funky. I'm gonna give it a little drag. Maybe. I don't want to give it too much drag. There we go. Alright. Oh, that's a good cat, actually. Ooh, nice little pull. Nice little run. Alright, guys. This is what I was hoping for. Heck yeah. Whew. See, sometimes you just gotta stay positive. Because <laughs> I was definitely... A little down in the dumps i mean i didn't land it yet but uh but yeah i was feeling pretty bummed after having that rough time getting on a bluegill or sunny for bait but this is actually a decent cat too not bad at all let's freaking go guys oh it's gonna give me a little trouble here trying to land it this is a weird spot to land a fish honestly come on buddy don't do too much rolling all right Landed it. Not a bad fish at all, guys. Let's freaking go, guys. Oh man, I want to shred my thumb though. Ouch, buddy. ouch, ouch, ouch. Ow! God! Shredding my hand up. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Holy crap. This thing's aggressive though. This guy is absolutely just tearing my freaking fingers up. Get a little grip on him so he can't do all that. Man, that was a hell of a situation. Hell yeah, guys. I'm really happy about this fish. Like, so happy. I really needed this to turn my day around because I was having a tough one. As you could see, I was getting a little bummed, but this definitely makes up for it. All right, guys, I didn't get as good of pictures as I would have liked to have got of this fish, but I want to get it back in the water. I've had it out for a minute, and I don't feel good about that. If I'm going to release a fish, I like to do it in as good a health as I caught it in. Awesome. It's swimming off. Hell yeah. Staying down, no issues. Hell yeah, guys. Let's freaking go. That was pretty quick too. Like I said, I was getting a little skeptical, but we got it done. Hell yeah. So the old, whatchamacallit was a success, the uh, food chain challenge. All right guys, as always, thanks for watching another episode and thank you so much for sticking around till the end. If you enjoy my content, if you enjoyed this video, please go ahead, hit like and subscribe, comment, any kind of that engagement you guys already know. As always, it helps so much, so thank you for any of that. Any continued support is so awesome, so I really appreciate that, guys. And to get to the point, today was a decent day. I'm pretty impressed with Pond 5. I actually came out here with a little confusion. I thought that the last time I did a little um, food chain challenge that I did there, I thought the last time I did that I was at Pond 5, and Pond 4 was somewhere closer towards 1 through 3 but I was mistaken and Pond 5 is actually out a little deeper. So I came out here, checked out Pond 5 and I'm pretty impressed. I may have only caught that one nice fish out here, but I mean, it's not crazy pressured out here. There's not garbage everywhere, which is awesome. It looks like just not as many people make the walk back here. And due to that, it seems like there's just better conditions. There's less pressure it's not all nasty and full of trash there's not fishing line getting tangled up on your feet everywhere it's just 
all the things that drive me crazy about ponds one through three aren't so much of an issue out here and I really like that. I like that there's special regulations too because I release almost every fish I catch regardless. So there's a lot of things I like about these ponds and I'm probably gonna be back pretty soon. Uh, other than that, I don't have a ton to say. Had a pretty great day today. Nice and peaceful out here. Even got a little nap in. Caught that beautiful channel cat. It was one of my best of the year so far. The only struggle I really had was getting on the sunny and bluegill after I got the grasshopper. Grasshopper was a little bit of a struggle, but man, the sunny and bluegill were tough to get on. I think they were just so little that they weren't able to get my 32nd ounce hook into their mouth, so I had to throw the old 64th ounce jig head on there and that did the trick. So anyway guys, that pretty much summarizes the situation. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one and I'll see you on the water.